Hey, what's up developers? Today I'm just gonna show you just a quick example of a landing page. This is a really simple landing page and I thought I would show you how I created it. And I'd love to hear your feedback on how you guys would create a landing page like this. Really appreciate it. And before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. And our sponsor today is Udemy. Udemy has amazing online courses. Actually, I'll leave a link in the description below with some of my favorites so you guys can check it out. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I am a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of a few books, include Vue.js in Action, which you can find in the links in the description below. All right, so this is a pretty simple landing page right here. Um, I just have this graphic on the left-hand side, has some text, and I'm using Grid. So I'm using Vue, actually I'm using Nuxt. So I thought I'd just jump in there and, and show you guys a, a few things on, on on how I did it. And like I said, I'd love to see how you guys would make something like this. So leave a comment below or if you're really ambitious, a uh, code pen, and I'll look through them. And if I find one I really like, I'll uh, I'll give you guys a free course because I got some extra free courses from Udemy uh, hanging out, um, especially Dylan Israel's 100 algorithm challenge. I have a few of those still to give away. So I'd love to hear your guys's thoughts on that. And by the way, today, no camera. I'm kind of mixing it up. Some days I'm trying the camera, some days I'm not trying the camera. So, uh, you know, let me know if you guys like the camera or not. I think I'll, I'll probably do some more. I think it's it's easy to use. Uh, so here is, here's the website. I'll show you what I did here. Actually, I downloaded this Illustrator file, and this is actually, it kind of looks like Undraw, but this isn't Undraw. If you don't know, um, here, I'll show you guys. So if you go to undraw.co, um, there's this, uh, it's an open source illustration for like every type of project you want. So if you click browse here, you can kind of see they, they all kind of look the same right here. Um, you see the face right here. Usually it looks like a face with no features in it. And they have just tons of different ones. Um, they're all free, 100% free. So if you got nothing out of this video, <laughs> check out undraw.co and just download some of these. I've seen so many websites that have this and you can almost tell right away, like this is uh, this is probably Undraw, but I think the style is also just catching on. People like this this type of style of graphics. Uh, you can then obviously it's SVG. You can then change the colors, make it you know make it a little bit more of your own. Uh, this this graphic right here is not from Undraw. Um, I, I I do actually have the Illustrator file for it, and if you've never used Illustrator, this is probably what you're going to be typically using. If you're in some web development companies, they might use Illustrator files, they might use PSD files, they might use Sketch files, they might use Figma files. So, I mean, you kind of run the gambit of what you're going to get if you're a web developer on what kind of graphics that, that, that they're going to give you. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's something where you have different layers and you can export those layers. I mean, Sketch and Figma are great um, for doing these things. Illustrator is, is pretty involved as well. And one nice thing about Illustrator, especially a graphic like this, like every single, I can pretty much highlight anything. I can just extract just the chair if I wanted or just the person on the chair. And I can also get rid of things like this. So what I did uh, once I got this Illustrator file is I just went through and I started um, looking at the layers. If you click at the right, um, at the top right here, the layers in Illustrator, I just tried to unselect the ones I didn't want uh, and once I found, you know, kind of like the basis, it's like I kind of want, I want the desk, but I don't want the background there. I want the books on the shelf. Eh, I don't really like that squiggly line. I do definitely need the body. I oh, know I don't really need, um, yeah, no, I, I think that's good. Like this right here would be pretty good. Actually, I'm missing an arm somewhere. No, maybe uh, it actually looks like the cup is floating there because the arm is gone, which is kind of funny. Let's see here. Here, arm. There's the arm. And the hand. There we go. So we got everything. So once you kind of get the graphic that you want, and this background, it, now I, I don't love it, but it's. I think it makes it look a little bit more distinct and it's kind of offsets the picture a little bit. Then what I just do is I go to File, Export. Um, actually, for this one... I think I highlighted it and then export selection. That's what I did, export selection. And then you can just name it whatever you want here. 
And once you do that, you click export selection. I have this in my dev bootcamp stuff folder. It'll just go ahead and create the SVG for you. And then I can just bring it into my app. So that's essentially what you have to do when you start getting graphics. Um, this um, nice thing about Illustrator, you can create really create SVGs. I know with Sketch, when you export to SVG, sometimes all it does is like embeds a ping file inside the inside the SVG file, which isn't as helpful. But pretty much this is this is really nice right here. Okay, so what I did, I was gonna kind of go and, and kind of code with you guys at the same time, but I thought just for this email or for this video, excuse me, I might be sending this out an email later that I would just show you the code. And this is will be on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description below. Actually, what I'm trying to do, if you guys are interested, I'm creating an open source project um, called devbootcamp.io. It's going to be a bootcamp prep website. I'm slowly kind of going through this. This is going to be the landing page for it. So you, if you guys are interested, um, you can put your email in. Um, it's going to be completely open source. So I'm looking for help on, on writing this this uh, site, it's it's uh, going to have view actually Nuxt in the front end, and in the back end, it's using you no know, Node and GraphQL. All right, so let me move this out of the way. So here, yeah, here's what the code looks like. And by the way, before anybody asks, this is called SynthWave eighty four. This is that's the theme that I use. People always ask that over and over again. Um, that's what makes it the glow and everything. So yeah, so I just have really simple. So I have the template. Say here's, if you look at the view right here, there's like nothing in it right now. Uh, I have, this is just a page in Nuxt. I didn't even, I, at first I put everything in the assets folder, but I decided later, let's use Cloudinary. So I uploaded all my files to Cloudinary, which is pretty common. And um, I created a container and then underneath, so here's the main one is this container right here. And then underneath the container, I have a left and right class. And inside the left and right class, and by the way, I could have used sections or things like that, but I'm just using div wrappers. You know, I'm not trying to make super semantic, some super semantic HTML right now, just as, as this quick demo. So on the left, so you could kind of see what I'm doing here. Here's the container, and in the container, I'm doing grid, and I'm just doing uh, two columns. Now, I, the reason I did this, this you might be thinking, well, 53 FR. So this is almost like a percentage, if you think about it, because these are like fractions. So I put 53% on this side and 47% on this side. And the reason I did that is if you look at here, I wanted to make this image just a little bit um, a little bit more space on, on the left-hand side and a little less space on the right-hand side. And the reason I did that is that way this grid right here would take up the full um, width of the screen from, so I put, uh, it's, you can see it from the top, it's the full height of the screen, I should say, not width. And you can see here, um, if I get, you can see here's the grid layout. You can see here, this one's just a little bit bigger than this side and it helps the image just kind of round out a little bit and it fills up vertically all the way to both sides. So that's why I did that. And then I just made sure that the height of the container is the few, the full viewport, which is that that's the 100 VH right here. And let me keep going here. So I have the left, I just put position relative on it. Um, actually, at one point I was using absolute positioning. Um, but I really don't need this position relative right now. I, I assume I can probably delete it. Yeah, nothing's changed with my picture, uh, with my page that is. And then I use some flex in here. So um, on the left-hand side, I just have this one image. Um, that's pretty much it that I exported out using Adobe Illustrator. And I just wanted to make sure that the image was centered. It's the line item center and then flex direction um, column. Really, since I only have one item in here, I don't even know if I need the flex direction column. Actually, I do. <laughs> yep, so I, I do need that. <laughs> and then uh, I, I added one media screen query because this is really, um, the problem with this picture, 
So if I go and look at mobile, I mean, it looks great on larger screens, but as the size gets smaller, you can see here now, I kind of get a little bit white above and on the bottom. And I didn't really like when it got to too small of a screen, um, I thought it would probably be just better just get rid of it completely. So at that point, um, it's completely gone. And uh, that that's kind of what I thought it'd be. And I think maybe in the future, I don't love this mobile layout. It's just really simple and plain and mobile, especially for phones. So I might try to think of a different graphic or, or some other way to do it. But for now, I think this this will be fine. And I'll just kind of think of what I want to do for the mobile design later. So yeah, so I, I just did the, the left flex, flex direction. And then on the right hand side, by the way, I'm kind of using this font family called Barlow Condense. I sort of like it. So it's it's nice. I, I actually uploaded that to Cloudinary as well. And it's in a different file. So I have this, see it in the, let's see here, the pages, SCSS. I have this main SCS file where I just have the font face set up inside there and this is kind of SCSS that's shared between the whole Nuxt app. The way you configure that, if you guys uh, have any questions on that, you actually need to go into the Nuxt config, which is this file here, and then you just set the global CSS right here and you put the little squiggly line and that denotes that it'll be, you know, right here. So that's what I did there. So back to our right side here, uh, I just have the H1, 51 pixels, 40 pixels, margin left. So that's this main banner here. I just wanted to give a little bit more padding on the left-hand side and uh, up up the font a little bit. Then I made the kind of the subtitle, this subtitle H and H5, just a little bit smaller underneath it. And you guys, you know, I use pixels. I know some people who swear up and down by using M's and rems, but uh, I don't, I think this is fine. Inputs, I just have a really simple input. I just made the border a little bit rounded for it with the border radius, 60 here with the email. I think I can actually make this a little bit bigger, I'm feeling. No, I don't know. Maybe a little bit bigger, I might mess around with that in the future. Uh, the button, I just did this all on set to just get rid of all the, what the ugly button is default out out the gate but I uh, put a little bit of border radius on it um, did a little bit of a cheesy uh, linear gradient and, and by the way one of the reasons I'm I kind of got this idea so if I bring up this this is essentially the landing page I downloaded so I kind of took this as inspiration um, for it they actually made the text blue to match this that might be a good idea and then they had this lorem ipsum text so that was my inspiration I try to copy some of it and then make some changes myself. Uh, like the gradient, I kept that, but I decided to, you know, make it change it a little bit. And so I, you know, just align the text in the center, and then I, um, for the button, I just made the width 100 pixels, 25 pixels height, and then the white text, which maybe I even go even wider, depending on it. But I think it's fine for now. And then uh, I have an info wrapper, and that's just the info wrapper is just the lower MIPS and text at the bottom, which I haven't decided. So here's the right side. Oops. You see here I have the H1, the H5, email input wrapper. And then I have this info wrapper with just some lorem text. And just a paragraph. So yeah, that that's pretty, pretty much it. Um, definitely. It uh, could be some improvements in the CSS, but you know, it's just a quick kind of example. I might actually throw this up on the actual website. I just need to connect this in to my email provider and probably do some validation here um, to make sure someone doesn't put just random nonsense in here and put maybe a little bit of uh, validation so it gives an error if you put something wrong in there. So I think that's pretty much it um, for now. I was thinking about maybe later on adding Beautify to this and messing around with that. But I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. Uh, how would you handle this? What would you change? I'd love to hear it. If you guys are interested, click on the link in the description below for my, the GitHub so you can look at the code yourself. You can even, th even uh, push up a pull request. Um, they are welcome. 
Uh, I may not have this up on GitHub right away. Depends on um, probably a few things. I might have it up pretty quickly though. So yeah, yeah, feel free to take a look at it. Throw up a pull request if you think there's a better way to doing this. And uh, make sure you check out the Udemy in the courses below. I really appreciate it. Thanks.